Hi, this is Miles Marie, the soldier of Mary. I'm doing a little translation of a short video that I found on a Prado Nuevo channel, DVD Prado Nuevo. It's an introduction to the apparitions of Our Lady at El Escorial. It was part of a show for the 25 years anniversary of the beginning of the apparitions. It gives you an idea a little bit of, of some of the key message of the apparitions at Prado Nuevo, but in, in particular, above all, it emphasizes the place and the holiness of the place, a place chosen by Our Lady. I hope you enjoy the video, uh, first ever English video, I think, on the apparitions of Prado Nuevo, what they're all about. Prado Nuevo, 25 Years of Fruits. With the motive of celebrating the 25 years of the first apparition of Our Lady at Prado Nuevo, related to the current controversy, a group of families and members of the Public Association of Faithful of Our Lady of Dollars, we're offering to you this video to talk about how the events began and how they are to this day, and also, we're going to talk about the religious phenomena that happen and the work of love and mercy. The 14th of June, 1981, Sunday of the Holy Trinity, they began the apparitions at Eres Coriel to Lufamparo in the field of Prado Nuevo. On top of a tree near to a fountain, Our Lady appeared as Our Lady of Sorrows and asked that people might construct a chapel and that they might think about the passion of Christ which has been forgotten about, ignored. She added, if this happens, there'll be cures. This water will cure. All that come here to pray every day will be blessed by me. Many will be marked with the sign of the cross on the forehead. Do adoration, do penance. These extraordinary happenings have become very widely known with increasing resonance, going even beyond our borders of Spain. Many people have been impacted on visiting Prado Nuevo. They perceive here something really special interiorly, and it's not easy to put into words. Also, on getting to know Lufan Paro, the chosen message of God, the chosen messenger, they've been touched upon meeting her. The church has always maintained a prudent silence regarding the apparitions. In 85, the Cardinal of Madrid, Don Angel, may God rest his soul, published a note, an official note, which made some considerations public, and among them, it said it was non consacta supernaturale, the apparitions in the place known as Prado Nuevo. This phrase, non constata supernaturale, has had many bad interpretations to it and some well in badly intentioned. Let's make it clear that this doesn't deny or approve the phenomenons because they hadn't finished that long ago, they hadn't started that long ago, and the bishop hadn't been able to make a, a full analysis of them to give a definite statement. There's been a lot of confusion as a result of this, so. And some have even said that, that the church has condemned the apparitions and going to the place. So the Archbishop actually, actually himself made clarifications on his statement, saying it wasn't a prohibition. It was just a church taking its normal prudent approach, a habitual approach in these cases. He said that he would make a, de a further declaration himself later, but he said, My saying non constat doesn't mean it didn't happen. Please be patient. Here's some things that flow from his full statement. That the apparitions could be supernatural. Secondly, secondly the people are very much allowed to come to visit Escorial and to do religious acts there, like rosaries, where the cross is, so long as they respect the ecclesiastical laws and the legal laws, civil laws. Okay, that, that religious shouldn't wear their um, robes.
when they go to the place, because it could suggest that the, the apparitions have had complete approval. But we've got to say that in spite of this note, we should follow by their fruits you should know them. Let's look at the fruits and further approbations that have come. The current cardinal has named chaplains. This gentleman, his priest here, and this priest here have been named chaplains of Prado Nuevo. From 85, a new phase has begun. Lufamparo, in complete obedience, followed the requests of the cardinal not to go with the, pair, the pilgrims on the first Saturdays of the month. That was really hard for her, but she did it. The same faithfulness to ecclesiastical authorities has happened with all those people directly linked to the things that happened. This behavior of both the followers and the visionary is one of the distinct signs that gives credit to the apparitions. Through the first and years of these religious phenomena, with the desire of, of doing works of love and mercy, a group of people who are really close to the actions spontaneously establish in 88 a foundation, a charity of Our Lady of Sorrows which had official status from 1989 with the Minister of Social Services and they, they give accounts to him every year. This foundation is a communion of goods rather than people and the, act, the social activity of the work came from the people that founded it. The, the, the funds came from those who founded it and then later on other people joined and gave money to, to the group as well. The statutes of the organization say that it's a private charity. It doesn't want to gain money. It wants to use its money according to the fifth article of the statutes. The fifth article says that the main point of the foundation is to help those in need without any discrimination of race, sex, age, etc. Particularly for those who don't have anyone to help them. In order to follow our Lord's teaching, whatever you did to those who were naked, hungry, thirsty, it's like you did it to me. Nowadays, the foundation is able to complete its work thanks mainly to the members of the association, but also donations from those who share it, share the aims of the foundation. It gets some public funds, some money from private entities, and money from the residents, if they have any, because quite often they've only got a little bit. The foundation, the foundation has various places throughout the country. The residents are Lady of Sorrows in El Escorial near Madrid, is the beginning place of the foundation. It's there to look after elderly people. Many pilgrims to Prado Nevo have seen their lives change through the apparitions. They've been drawn but to a spirituality. They return to the church as a result of going to Prado Nuevo. The conversions and vocations are numerous. It's there have been cures. There are many testimonies of this. And the most notable fruits are going to happen when the chapel is built. Among all, the pilgrims that come here are waiting patiently until the church gives its full approval. They're following the calls of Our Lady to approach to this place, that you might receive grace, special grace, my children, to help you, help you to save yourselves. So there we go, maybe two things just to draw from this. 
The first one is that Our Lady clearly was speaking in her messages about the importance of of meditating on the passion, of of love of neighbor, and of adoration, of coming to the place Prado Nuevo, and a chapel should be built there. And that something that flew, that flew, that flowed, <laughs> that flowed from these messages was the was the instinct, the impulse that a charity should be formed and that the charity should do works of mercy. And that charity, that charity went on to uh, achieve official status. It's got official status, is a proper charity that's governed by the Spanish law. And it runs nursing homes, what we might call nursing homes, um, particularly for those that don't have anyone to support them. And it looks after people as an expression of the commandment of Christ. It kind of mentioned in the video, but in the longer version of the video, you find out that these sisters that are looking after the elderly are, are women that whose lives were changed as directly as a result of the apparitions and going to Prado Nuevo. They gave their life to help these uh, these elderly and to to follow our Lord's evangelical counsels. We heard about some vocations of priests as well, and we saw two priests that whose vocations came from going to El Escorial and through their impact with the person of Luth Amparo, because it mentioned also there that many people's lives were changed, not by just going to the place, but also from their personal encounter with this woman who was so extraordinary, who you would have heard about in that earlier video of mine where I I tried to translate an interview that she had on Spanish television where you get a little bit of an idea of some of the phenomena that were surrounding her. What a holy woman she was. The other thing the the video really mentioned was that that the people that are linked to the apparitions are trying to be really obedient to the to the hierarchy of the church. And actually the hierarchy of the church as expressed by the archbishop and then the cardinal the hierarchy has been fairly open towards the truth of the apparitions. It's the the foundation of Our Lady of Sorrows has got approval of the of the cardinal. The the foundation that does charitable work has approval. The religious order of women has approval by the cardinal. And although this video mentioned about how people that go there, priests and nuns, can't go in their robes, they can't go identifiably. That's now gone. Uh, more recently. The, the more recently the the church has said well that's no longer the case and and actually the cardinal himself went and said masses at the a temporary chapel it was only a temporary chapel that was built at prado nuevo the the actual one according to the specifications of our lady is yet to have to be built i hope this has helped you to learn a little bit more about these apparitions may almighty god bless you may our lady intercede for you in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen